Michael Boyle for Stack.com. Today we're going to talk about overhead pressing. And I guess the big question for me is should we overhead press? How much should we overhead press? When I look at adults, one of the things that we're going to look at is if your adults can't get their arms over their head without load, they shouldn't be overhead pressing. If you look at them from the side and they lift their arms over their head and they have to go into extension in their lumbar spine to get their hands up over their head, it's not a good idea. I will go so far as to say I don't think anyone should overhead press with a bar anymore. If you ask me about overhead pressing options, I would say bar, last possible option. I can't believe that nobody has dumbbells and kettlebells out there anymore, so I think you're always going to have that option. If we look at the ability, the shoulder is what I like to call a spiral diagonal, spiral rotational joint. It likes to move in rotation. It does not like to be forced into a fixed bar path like a straight bar is going to do. It really dislikes external rotation like a behind the neck press, so we never want to have the bar behind our head. I don't like, I don't like back squats, I don't like behind the neck presses, I don't want anybody doing that. Because again, most people do not have enough external rotation to comfortably get in there. The other thing you've got to realize, if, you've got to, if, if you're questioning whether your athlete should overhead press, don't do it. If your doctors have said no, if you're dealing with throwing athletes, people that are prone to overuse, I just say nope, don't worry about it. Incline presses will get you a pretty good compromise angle and will be okay. But if you want to get to overhead press, we're going to show you a really simple progression. So Mike, first what I like to start with is just a band press. And with the idea, he's just going to try to go straight up as far as he can. But what you'll see is as he gets to the top, he's going to externally rotate a little bit. So externally rotate, we mean his hand is turning, his palm is turning towards you. The nice thing about this, this band is, the, the reason we're doing this, it's getting harder as he goes up and hopefully what we're doing is we're recruiting his subscapularis, we're recruiting the muscles that depress his humerus, so we're making him much less likely to impinge. If he can do this without pain, we're going to go to our bottoms up kettlebell press. And here we're going to probably have him start in a half, let's start half kneel because I think that's where we would normally start. Again, this is an amazing exercise because the grip action that you have to have and the balance that you have to incorporate, you can have someone who says, my shoulder hurts when I press overhead, and you can give them bottoms up kettlebell press, and they'll look at you like magic and say, that doesn't hurt. There's something about the recruitment in the rotator cuff that comes from having to grip that kettlebell and having to control the side to side motion that kicks those stabilizers on a little bit better. If he handles that pain free, and we'll let him switch sides here, then we're going to go, you can still go, we'll go, still go, let's go half kneel, we'll just go regular half kneel kettlebell press. Because again, I would prefer in a perfect world that we're pressing with kettlebells. And again, if you'll watch, Mike will naturally, that rotational spiral kind of diagonal pattern is a really natural pattern to get your hand up over your head. The other thing here with the kettlebell, if you look, the weight of that bell is producing an external rotation force. That external rotation force is probably countered by an internal rotation force. It's his subscapularis hopefully getting kicked on to keep that humeral head down in the socket where it's supposed to be. So if you look at these three, a lot of times you can take somebody through these three exercises and get somebody overhead pressing pain free relatively short time. When we start talking sets and reps again, as I said, I'm still, I'm a three set of ten guy. I'm not going to get fancy on you. Yes, you can go, you can go heavier. Yes, you can cycle it. But when we're talking about where do you want to start, three sets of ten is always a nice place to start. I'm Mike Boyle. Join us next week for another episode of Elite Performance on Stack.com.